Welcome back crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and I am back today to make my second ever laminated pocket sized traveler's notebook. Last month I shared the very first one I made and here it is. It was travel themed and my new one I'm going to have a fall or autumn theme and the focus of it is going to be on being grateful or just taking time out each day to be thoughtful and look at the positives of the day. And what got me started on this was last week at Hobby Lobby, I found these Heidi Swap stickers in the clearance section and they were only $1.79. There are three sheets in here. There is a version with a black background and gold foil text, clear stickers with gold foil text, and white stickers with gold foil text. And I like just the little journal starters on them. Like, took a moment to notice, I am dreaming, best 15 minutes spent, my favorite discovery today. I wore my favorite, I owe a thank you to, turned up the volume when. I just thought they were just fun stickers to get your brain thinking and looking for positive things in your day. I think we all can turn on the news or get on the internet and see everything negative. So I just wanted to start thinking about some happy thoughts, some positive thoughts. So once I get this traveler's notebook done, I hope that each day I can just do um, a little thinking about what I have done. Now, if you would like to join me for this, it's not going to be a formal collaboration, but if you make a video where you're going to share little happy thoughts each day or something you journal each day, why don't you put the hashtag 30 thoughtful days and I will make a playlist that whenever a video goes up and has that hashtag in the description box that it will go into that playlist and you can watch mine and you can watch other people's. And so besides the stickers, I am going to be using the Autumn Dream paper from Craftsmith, which was the last round of Hot Buy papers at Michael's. And then I have my gold stretchy cord from Hobby Lobby to hold my inserts in my traveler's notebook. I thought this would be a perfect cover for the journal because when it wraps around, I just loved the, how the trees could wrap around. I'm probably going to try to cut it, my scene out of the middle here. My cover is gonna end up being cut down to five and a half by 11. So I'm just gonna get on my ruler here and see where would be a good place to cut the five and a half. next thing I'm going to do is round the corners on this and that's just so when I do the lamination I can also round the corners on that so I will not have any sharp edges. I'm going to do the quarter inch size on my crocodile corner chompers. And now is time to score it. Because my scoreboard doesn't go from like zero to 12 inches, I had to adjust my scores a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and score this to get it ready. The reason I flipped this around was just how I want it to end up being folded at the end. This should be my little flap that folds to the cover. So I just turn it upside down. I'm gonna start scoring like that. So 
so now I have all my scores ready and now it is also um, sitting the correct way how I wanted it. And now what I need to do is get out my laminator and let that heat up. So I'll be back in just a little bit to show you how I laminate it. I thought while I was waiting for the laminator to heat up, I could have a little candy break. My daughter went out trick-or-treating this week and was rewarded greatly for her efforts. These are some of my favorite candies, so I thought I might have one while I'm waiting for that laminator to warm up. Why don't you tell me your favorite candies below and if you take a portion of your children's haul. Well, my craft area smells like hot. So that must mean the laminator is ready to go. Those of you who have a laminator, I think you know what I'm talking about. There is a specific smell that comes with it. So I'm gonna put my piece of paper into my laminating pouch. And then I'm going to pull my laminator to my workspace. Now I have shared many times before this laminator it is a scotch thermal laminator and is totally worth the twenty dollars you usually pay for it at like michael's um target or walmart great deal and you know online you can find good deals on the pouches but i'm just gonna i'm gonna do five mil because i think that makes it go slower i'm gonna feed it into the back of my laminator while i'm waiting i might have a starburst To ensure that I get a good seal on my lamination, I do like to send it through twice, but I also want the laminator to have time to heat back up again to full heat since it just did this one. So what I'm going to do is count the 30, have that last starburst, and then I'll run that through again. When I run it through the second time, I'm going to put the opposite end through first. All right, so that's laminated. I'm going to shut off my laminator and put that back to the side. And this is ready to be trimmed down. I'm going to use my trimmer this time. And what I'm gonna do is just try to get a nice even border around the edge. Make sure not to cut into the little bubble that is around the paper. You might um, cut the seal of the lamination and then it could start to come apart. Once again, I will round the corners of this piece using that same quarter inch side. And now I'm just going to kind of reinforce or rescore those lines just to help with the final folding of it. And I'm going to try to get it on that groove there. Once I have the scores redone, I'm going to fold each one of them and just use my bone folder to help that out. So my cover is all done and laminated. Now what I need to do is add the holes and the elastic cord for the binding. I am going to again use that original tutorial for my hole placement and how I thread and sew each one. I did realize that in my original video and in the tutorial, I probably should have went ahead and punched the holes already one time on here. 
and then punch them again, but hopefully my crocodile will just go through both layers, so I don't think it'll be a huge deal. But what I'm gonna do is halfway between each of the score lines here, I'm going to pierce it just a little bit so I can see with my crocodile where to actually punch the hole. Now last time I went in pretty deep with my hole and I thought it kind of squished the book. So I am going to make that a little further out this time where I start. And I'm just eyeballing this just where those halfway marks would be. And I'm gonna get out my trusty crocodile, one of my favorite tools. Many of my favorite tools are by We Are Memory Keepers. And then I'm going to use the smallest punch, which is an eighth, and I'm going to make holes in here. And I cannot really see those well, so I'm gonna punch a little bit deeper, maybe go ahead and make a hole. And I have my three holes on that side. I'm gonna do the same thing over here, pierce it in a little deeper so I actually have a hole. And another thing I forgot to do, of course, was to punch my hole for the thread that goes around the binder. So I'm going to do that. and all the holes are done. Now I'm gonna go search for my darning needle that actually fit this thread. Um, hopefully I will not be back in too long of a time. Ta-da, that was not too bad. Now I do know from last time that I need to put a little bit of tape on the end of my thread just so I can um, thread those needles easier. And I just use a little bit of the scotch removable tape and I put it on the end so there's excess sticking off and fold it in about thirds. And this just helps me grip it from the other end of the needle. And I can't remember if this was um, a suggestion from the original tutorial video or a different YouTuber, but I did see this on YouTube. And that way I just start that through the hole of there and then I have something to pull on and the tape just helps grip that to keep it pulling through. All right. Now I... All right, now that I have gotten the elastic bands for the inserts ready, I'm gonna go ahead and create the inserts. Eventually, I will need to create an elastic band for the cover that holds it closed, but I'm gonna wait until the inserts are done to do that. For my insert notebooks, I'm gonna be using some white paper, some graph paper, and some notebook paper, as well as for the cover and some of the inside pages, more of the paper from the Autumn Dream paper stack. The first thing I'm gonna do though is make cut my writing paper and get that ready to go. I am gonna be cutting this to five and an eighth inch tall by seven inches wide. Now, when I cut my covers later, I'm gonna cut the covers to seven and a quarter inches wide, and that's just so the pattern paper covers up the folded paper inside of it. I thought that might look nicer. Now 
this paper I'm going to start out at a little bit wider than seven. I'm going to do seven and a quarter. And that's just so I had more white left to the left of my red line. I'm going to flip it around and then cut to seven inches. That is probably all of the writing paper that I'm going to cut for now. The next thing I'm going to do is cut some inner pages of pattern paper to the same size as this. So I'm not quite ready for my notebook cover paper yet. I'm just going to pull this page out for later for some cut aparts. Alright, so I just got out a variety of papers to use on some of the inside pages, and I also pulled out a couple that I'm probably going to use as the cover of some of my books. I just liked that saying down here. I'm hoping that will fit um, on the front. For right now, I'm going to go ahead and cut these two five and an eighth inch tall and I'm going to make two strips of that because even though my covers are going to be cut a little bit bigger they're still only going to be five and an eighth inch tall so that way I can use this paper for some of the inside pages as well as for a cover if I want to This one I am going to set to the side as a possible cover. For this wreath paper, I'm going to cut five and an eighth inch from each end, just so I kind of have two pieces that look the same. I'm going to have four books, so I need four covers. I think I'm definitely going to use these three plus this one and most of these then do have the gold foiling except for the one that says autumn is such a beautiful thing i'm going to take this time now to go ahead and cut these down to cover size and instead of just cutting to seven inches wide i'm going to be doing seven and a quarter the only one i really want to worry about is this autumn is such a beautiful thing i want to see where that seven and a quarter will land and then how the center would be it is going to get folded in half if I cut that. You know what I'm going to do? I have another page just like this. And, you know, it's probably not my favorite pattern anyway. I don't do scrapbooking where I would want to use the whole background. So what I'm going to do is get out the other one and cut it just a little bit differently. Instead of having my book close like this with the saying, I'm going to have it close like that with the saying going up the side. So that way I have five and eighths inches there. Let's see where that would land. Much better. The autumn is such a beautiful thing, won't be centered, but I'm not going to let that bother me right now. And this one then I'm going to go ahead and cut to seven and a quarter inches wide. And then when I fold it in half, that's what it will look like. I like that. While I'm on the seven and a quarter inches thought process, I'm going to go ahead and cut down the rest of my covers to that size. On this one, I'm going to cut um, closer to the edge of this wreath just to get rid of that blank space at the end and then I'm going to cut to seven and a quarter and that way I get more of the wreath on my cover paper. I'm going to set these aside for now and cut my inside pattern papers. I want to figure out how many pattern papers I want inside each one. Right now I have 13 so I think let's find three for each one which would mean I need 12 pieces of paper. I think this is the one that I won't use on the inside. I'm going to use the rest of these and I'm going to cut each of these to seven inches wide, which is just as wide as the inside writing paper that I cut. Now 
Now I'm just gonna start folding everything in half to get it ready to make the booklets. Do a couple pieces at a time here. And now I'm gonna fold my writing papers. So I'm going to have four total insert books, which means I'm going to have two pieces of each type of writing paper plus two inside pattern papers plus a cover. What I'm going to do now is just see how I want that inside to look. All right, so there is my first book, and I wanted to show you the inside. And this is why I cut the covers a little bit longer. When it's closed, you don't see too much of the inside paper, but if I would take that cover off, you can see on the inside, you see a lot more of that, the inside pages just with how it folds. So I thought this was a cleaner look and I wanted to try this. So there is one booklet, and I think that is definitely enough pages in there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with the other four. I just had a thought. In this one, I start off with two pattern papers. I think what I'm going to do is adjust it a little bit. So this pattern is actually the center, and then that just spreads those patterns out a little bit more. All right, I must have miscounted or miscut in some way because I am short of both these papers and the white um, typing paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut some more of those and finish the notebooks off camera. I'll be back in just a minute. While I was off camera cutting the white typing paper and finishing my books, I realized that I had originally cut enough of the pattern paper inside to have three in each book. So I did change my books just a little bit. I have the cover, and then I have two writing pages, and then a pattern page, instead of having three and then a pattern, and then I go two more writing pages and a pattern, two more writing pages, and then the pattern in the center. So they are slightly different, but now I'm ready to insert those into my cover. Now, with any luck, this scrap would work. You know what? I'm going to make this scrap work. This was what I had left over from when I threaded it. I'm going to go ahead and tie a little knot down here. And cross your fingers that this will work instead of me having to cut um, another piece. Because this seriously will hopefully work. And it will save me some of my gold elastic. This gets threaded through the hole in the front cover. Oh yeah, that works excellent. I am going to cut off just a little bit of this excess back here. And my traveler's notebook is ready to go. For mine, I think that I will be using the white stickers with the gold foiling. And so just each day I'll put a prompt on there. I am hoping to start mine within the next few days and maybe I'll have a, a video you know, every few days where I share what I've been doing. If you would like to join me on my little 30 days of thoughtfulness journey, this is nothing formal. Um, just when you upload a video with your journaling for the day or your happy thought for the day, 
Use the 30 thoughtful days hashtag and it will automatically upload to the playlist I have created. If you enjoyed my video today, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. If you're a subscriber to my channel already, thank you so much for stopping by again. If you're not a subscriber, I hope you'll consider it. Please click on the subscribe button below and you can even click on that bell so you get notifications of when I upload more videos. I hope you're having a crafty day. Thanks. Bye-bye.